Hi, here's the PT hotline. How can I help you? So here's the key, Pinky. I need your help. You know that guy at work that I had a crush on that just kind of like screwed me over? Well, he's begging for my attention, and I don't know what to do about it. He won't leave me alone. Pinky, oh my fucking God. So get this. I think my like boyfriend crazy, is cheating on me. Alcohol and I have will no not stop texting me for and calling me. And I don't oh know my what God, to do. Pinky. Okay, so my ex texts me, and I don't know what to do. I don't want to fall back in this cycle, but I don't know if I get up. So, so, like, when does the blow up start? Hi, and welcome back to the Between You and Me with Rihanna Marie podcast. I have missed you. It's been such a long week. Goodness gracious. We have a gorgeous episode today. I really think this is very much so a for the girls episode uh we're gonna be talking i'm gonna be reading your best friend breakup stories and you know i think that there's something to say about the layers of sisterhood and also the heartbreak that we can cause each other and how how shattering a friend breakup can really be so i'm excited to read your stories and create just a warm cozy space for that and i have uh some of my own to share as per usual but i also wanted to talk a lot about like wellness this week and i also wanted to chat about Venus being retrograde for my astrology girlies and uh yeah I just wanted to go over a couple like wellness things and update you on what I've been up to (laughs) so this past week I've had a bit of a new like journey when it comes to fitness and working out uh this is rare for me and I've never been much of a how do you say? Worker outer? <laughs> uh, I've always loved yoga. Yoga's just been my go-to, but to be completely transparent, I'm like a yin yoga, a little easy vinyasa flow. Vinyasana? See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I do, but I've always just been on like the easier, like stretching, connect with your body, your heart, your mind kind of yoga girl. And this week, I tried out a bunch of new things. I did uh, Legree Reformer Pilates, which absolutely kicked my fucking ass. Like, I would say, why did no one tell me? But you guys did tell me that it was no joke, and it was no joke. I was shaking, sweating, I mean, everything, and sore for days. But, like, that good, sore feeling, you know? Oh, my God, it felt so good. And there was a point where I was going to quit fully. I was, like, I went to the bathroom and contemplated leaving because I just didn't think I could keep going. I thought I was going to throw up, and I was just, like, there's no way. But I pulled myself together, and I said, nope, we're going to stick it through. We're going to do this. We've got this. And I came back out and I kept going. I kept pushing through. And there was something in that moment where like everything changed. The moment when I decided to keep going, I, it was euphoric. Like act, like genuinely euphoric. It started to feel so good. Um, and I think it was one of my like, <laughs> biggest most real experiences with true endorphins and like long-term dopamine and as someone who's sober and you know comes from a history of short-term dopamine hits uh let alone like the world we live in which is so much instant gratification and just so much easy dopamine I experienced something very special (laughs) And I remember looking up and there was this sign and it said, but did you die? And I, I actually started crying, (laughs) but this is a safe space. We don't have to pretend we're not emotional around here. I started crying 
but like happy tears. And it's so funny because Owen always says to me, like whenever I'm, you know, going through it or kind of overwhelmed or stressed out, he'll look at me and he'll go, but are you dying? And I'm like, like, what do you say? <laughs> it like shocks you out of your spiral so quick. Cause you're like, well, well, no, no, I'm not dying. But like, <laughs> and it was just, it was a special moment and it felt so rewarding. And I went and got like nectar afterwards and I don't know. It was just awesome. And, uh, the second day, what did I do? Wait, wait, wait. I, why can't I remember right now? Oh, the second day I did heated hit matte pilates and it was like a blend of yoga pilates and hit workouts in a heated room oh my god it was so good i think that's the one i missed the most that was really good and i loved the instructor and i feel like coming from yoga that was just it was such a good workout and it had that same like endorphin release feeling but it was also comforting because i was on a mat and uh, I don't know, there is something about, like, the moment you drop onto the mat, and I just always say to myself, thank you so much for getting me here, like, I am so glad we made it to the mat, uh, so I loved that, and then on the third day, I tried, um, hot sculpt yoga, and let, let me tell you, that was no joke. I was drenched, absolutely drenched. Again, it was so good and so rewarding. And <laughs> I loved the hot yoga class because I don't know what it is about hot yoga, but everyone is very vocal and it is so incredible. <laughs> like when the instructor says like take an audible exhale, no one plays around. You are getting like audible, like almost moans and it's kind of freeing uh but it felt really good and I pushed myself and I didn't stop and I there was mirrors in there so just like looking at myself with the weights in my cute little fit and pushing through knowing I was like sweating and shaking it just felt so incredibly good um I don't know I learned a lot with that like I really wanted to share it because I know we all love, like, hearing about the wellness stuff and hearing from each other, uh, but it was special for me because it was so brand new, and I was, like, something just came through me, and I just wanted to push myself to try something I don't usually try. It was awesome. It was really, really, really cool, and it was really cute because around the same time a bunch of my girlfriends were also like getting a gym membership for the first time in a long time like trying out cycle classes me and Lauren were like trying out class pass together and uh sharing our favorite classes in our area and it was just special you know like special to feel like, we were kind of all in, in it together, and I don't know what brought upon that surge, you know, and why we were all in it all of a sudden, but it was, like, a collective thing in my, in my social group, and that just made it feel, like, even better. Okay, but <laughs> a couple, like, things I want to say on that. By the fourth day, I was very, very sore, and also started to get horrible cramps because my period was on its way and I wanted to keep going you know I wanted to like try out cycle the next day and I wanted to keep going and I also wanted to get this episode recorded and I hit this like low the next day because my period was here and I'm lethargic and tired and I'm having hot flashes and cramps and my emotions are all over the place and I feel absolutely bonkers and I went into like a shame spiral and a shame spiral is where you're like oh my god I feel so horrible but then you go to I feel so horrible about feeling so horrible what is wrong with me 
what something is seriously wrong with me because I feel horrible but I feel horrible about feeling horrible and I feel horrible that I feel horrible about all that I'm just the worst person ever I mean oh my god get a grip (laughs) and you go into this spiral and then you go into like this space of of non-action it's this liminal pause but it's not a good pause because you're not doing it consciously it's not a okay, you know what, I'm going to take a step back and let myself be in a mode of pause or take a break. Instead, you're fighting the break the whole time, right? So I'm fighting the break the whole time. And I'm like, try, I keep trying to get up and I keep trying to make something happen, do something. I'm looking around, my room's messy, everything's like chaotic and I really was ignoring a very a very simple calm voice inside of my body that was just asking me to stop and asking me to cocoon for a moment and I really know that had I just accepted that instead of fighting against it so hard I probably would have gotten the rest I needed sooner (laughs) But fighting it created more tension inside of my being, right? And it was a whole day of that. It was a whole day of basically fighting what my body was asking me for. And by the nighttime, I was just like, oh my god, I'm okay. You know what? (laughs) I see what I could have done and I'm going to do it now. And so I just accepted cocooning. And I'm like, I'm going to get takeout. I'm going to go under the covers and I'm going to do nothing. And very, very quickly I felt better and I and I, ideas started to come to me and energy started to come to me and I cleaned up my room a little bit and like jotted down a couple ideas for different things and it was such a better flow state. I allowed a flow to come through and I reminded myself, well, You'll record the podcast when you're feeling the vibe. You'll get one up for the week. And also, like, the the workout classes aren't going anywhere. (laughs) And a period is a beautiful time to embrace where you're at and give your body, like, a moment of rest, you know? I think that there's something to say about discipline and consistency, and there's also something to say about listening to your body when it's asking for rest because your body will take take that time or you can give it and uh do preventative care so you can listen at the first nudge rather than you know pushing 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 and then getting sick and then being like really done right and it's hard like I think it's something that truly only we understand because when you have a cycle you feel so different at different parts. I was recently talking to my girlfriends and I was, we were all like, if I could feel the way I feel when I'm ovulating the entire month, I would be unstoppable. (laughs) You know, like when I'm ovulating, I feel like I have the best routine, so much energy. Like I'm just in go, go, go. And it feels so good. It's so addicting. Probably why I loved Adderall when I (laughs) was not sober, uh, it's just that, that there's a euphoric feeling to being really, really productive, and, uh, it's hard that each week we feel a little bit different, you know, so I think I'm trying to learn how to reframe that, and how to also, like, set myself up for success in terms of knowing that, I'm going to PMS every month. I'm going to have a period every month, God willing, right? (laughs) Uh, And so it's something I know is coming and getting, like, upset about the fact that I'm more tired or I'm less motivated, like, during that week is so ridiculous. And I'm trying to learn how to balance that out, but also how to, like, Again, like, do things before that time, make things a little easier when that time comes around, and build routines that support that, because this world does not support a month-long cycle, you know? It supports the, truly, it supports the male cycle, which is 24 hours, you know? They get a reset every single day, 
so it's it's hard but I think like honoring yourself and honoring the beauty of the fact that you have a cycle is so cool you know like I do I love that time and I love it more when I embrace it and I let it be like not even just an excuse, but you know what I mean? Like a very valid reason to cocoon and rest and watch Gilmore Girls. I'm just a happier person. But I feel like I would be extra satisfied during that time if I had things pre-recorded or just like stuff I could do from bed when that time comes. I don't know. You get me? It's a balance. You can't be perfect all the time. And there has to be room for rest and rejuvenation and knowing that it's safe to stop and also there has to be room for determination and consistency and all that goodness um yeah so I feel like it's been a week of both sides of that coin like feeling really energized really productive really stoked like the the feeling of using my body in that way was so special like again really new for me and I love it. Also, this is not an ad, but Class Pass is so fucking cool. Like, it is, it feels like I'm cheating. Because Pilates and yoga studios are like minimum, I don't, like 170 for a membership. But you pay like, what, $50 a month and get a bunch of credits that you can use to different studios and like do whatever you want when you want. It's so awesome. So I'm having a lot of fun with it and I'm going to keep trying out like new classes and find my favorites. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, anyways, I also wanted to tell you about my two favorite books that I'm reading right now. Um, I started reading and I know I'm late to the game. I know I'm late to the game, but I started reading... Uh, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I am very impressed by how good it is and how much I love it. I don't know why I stayed away from it, but it just never, like, never really caught my attention. But I love it, and it, it does talk about that shame spiral. I forget what, what uh, they call it in the book, but it talks about that spiral you go into, and it also talks about you know, like, not trying so hard in terms of, like, not being so attached to the outcome and the perfection, but letting go a little bit, and, um, how things just work when you do that, and I have an episode all about that called, um, Girl Stop Trying So Hard, and how I essentially manifested a lot of the beautiful things in my life by stopping forcing it, and uh kind of allowing more and it's true like attachment is the root of all of our suffering and I love uh the breakdown of how the more focused you are on creating more positive more happiness in your life it really is just it's a negative thing in and of itself right because you're saying you don't have enough and that there's a lack somewhere and I think that that's so true. So yeah, I am really, really loving that book. And I've been taking like book notes and I just wanted a good self-help book in my routine because uh, I've been enjoying fiction lately. And I got this book. Okay, so Barnes and Nobles does like it, uh, a blind date with a book where it's all wrapped up and there's only like a little bit written about it. And then you open it up like a present, <laughs> and I got the, ended up being the seven-year slip, and it's just, like, honestly a very cheesy rom-com, but it's cute, and it's, like, a play on time, and I've really been enjoying it, just something, like, happy to be reading, so, uh, if you're looking for a good, like, light read, kind of happy story, that's a really good one. I've been thinking a lot about wanting a Kindle. I love physical books, though. But I'm just thinking of so many moments where I feel like I would just love a Kindle. I I don't know. Do any of you have Kindles and are you just like diehards? Do you love them? And I need to hear from someone who loves a physical book. But like, 
I I feel like Rory Gilmore. I will lug around like five books because I like to. I don't ever read just one at once. I like to like be reading a bunch. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about that a little. Okay, so I want to get into your stories. I'm so excited. Um, I hope that they're good. You guys did not disappoint on our ex stories, so uh, I have a lot of faith. <laughs> um, okay, so friend breakups. Friend breakups are seriously no joke, and I've I've had a good few, but the stories that I want to share with you, they're not about girl friendships. They're about guy friendships, because um, I have some I have some good ones. I think it's just, like, it's just a shocking moment when a friend backstabs you, you know? It's so unexpected, and I don't know how to explain it. It's, like, for me, I feel so loyal to my friends, and I think that you think that everyone thinks the way that you do, and so it's really hard when people backstab you or like shock you that way it's just it's unexpected you know um but the first one I wanted to share was I had this best guy friend and we were friends for a very long time I think like seven years and I know this is a debate can guys and girls be friends but I have had genuine long-term platonic friendships with guys that I still have to this day I understand that lots of people think there's nuances to it, but on my end, I think it's possible, and I also think it's a valuable type of friendship, you know, because I think it's good to learn from them, and they can learn from you, and uh, I have had like 12 plus year friendships that have never crossed a line, so for me, it's possible. So when this happened, I felt very betrayed because I thought that this was one of those friendships, right? So I have this best guy friend, and this was during my last relationship. And uh, nothing, no boundary was ever crossed. Like, the boundaries were clear, right? And I go through my breakup, and I, like, he's helping me through it. First red flag. (laughs) But he's helping me through it, and then ends up saying to me, like, looks at me one night and is like, I've been waiting four years for this. I'm like, oh my god, what does that mean? I'm sorry, what does that mean? This whole time you've, like, what, had feelings, had a crush, and you were just waiting for the breakup? I really felt, like, blindsided in that moment because I was like, no, we're friends, you know? Like, oh. (sighs) There is such a betrayal when, like, a guy friend who is just your friend, like, switches up and shows that they've had feelings all along and you're just like, how... (sighs) I thought we knew what this, I thought we knew what this was. I thought we were on the same page. I don't get it. (sighs) Yeah. Okay, I have another one. Uh, This goes way back when I was in fifth grade. I was best friends with this girl, and she was, like, the popular girl because, you know, that's a thing in those times. I wonder if I can just take off my glasses for a moment because they're just driving me crazy okay and um she was really 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 mean to me like bullying level mean to me and there was this day I'll never forget it I'm in class and she passes me a note or someone passed me the note and it was like meet me here at lunch and so I'm thinking it's like a cute thing I'm gonna be a part of and I'm all excited, 
And so I go out there, and um, there was a circle of girls legitimately standing in a circle. And she, like, brought me into the middle of the circle. And with full confidence goes, okay, everyone go around and say why they hate Rihanna. Looking back, my heart's, like, breaking for, for fifth grade me. And all these people like little minions, start going around and giving whatever their reason is. And it gets to this girl and this one girl who was also a really close friend of mine. And she she was always on the shyer side. But in this moment, she like stands forward. And I think she like crossed her arms and she goes, I'm not saying anything. And... From that moment on, we became best friends. That's Lauren, and a lot of you guys know Lauren, and we are still best friends to this day. Um, and is that just so cute? I just can't. It's so cute. She was the only one who refused, and from that moment on, we were like sisters. Like, that is my sister, and one of my longest-term friendships, so... You know, sometimes things happen, but then something beautiful comes. Sometimes bad things happen, and then something beautiful comes out of it, which is really, really special. Okay, I have one more. It's another guy friend one, but this one, you gotta, you gotta like, buckle in. Okay, I hate this story. <sighs> but realizing that a lot of my bad stories are about guy friends does make me feel better about the quality of friendships I have. I do really, like, I value friendships with my girls so much. It's so important, and it's life-saving, you know, and I've had times where, like, I forgot about that, and then you realize how much you need them, Uh, but long-term friendships are just so so life-saving that those are the people who will be there no matter what you know and it's and it's a two-way street you got to be a friend who's going to show up for your friends no matter what the the person that they want to call in their darkest moment and it means everything to me to be able to be that friend and also to know that I can curate friendships that will show up for me in that way, too. It's so special. Sisterhood. Sisterhood can't be replaced, you know? You can get so much out of your relationships. You can get and whatever type of relationship it is, but any romantic relationship with whoever, you can get so much out of that. But there's something that you can not replace when it comes to friendship. And you can't fill it with a, with a romantic relationship. It has its own place too. And I, I love that we're doing this episode because I think it's really cool to talk about this, you know. And, and friendship is this special place where there aren't so many rules, you know, like, One of my favorite things is those friendships where, especially, like, in our adult years now, we won't talk for, like, three to four months. But when we come back together, it's, like, no time passed, you know? Uh, Just low, what is it? Low, low maintenance friendships. And not in the sense of the value you bring to each other or the depth of friendship, but in that there's not so many expectations on your time as much as there's just unconditional love. Okay, that was a tangent, forgive me, but let me tell you this story. Buckle the fuck in. Okay, so this is not one of my, like, 12-year platonic guy friends. Those ones, still to this day, A+, plus, going well. Uh, this one was more like four or five years. And again, this was like in the timeline of my last relationship is when we became friends. 
we always got along really well. Just good conversation. I always was, like, excited to have a little conversation, you know? So the breakup happens, and I go to... I'm like, there's like social situations where he's there. And so he's kind of just helpful through it, you know, and we like are hanging out and I feel like I made it really very, very clear because then I was like in my self love era. I'm not looking for anything. I just want to be with me, you know? So it's all, that's, I feel like that was really clear. I think I said it out loud and I also remember like feeling like I had to say it like something in me knew to make sure I was saying that out loud so I did and I I just anyways so it starts to get kind of weird and it starts slow it starts with like compliments that we met like we were not a complimenting friendship like he'd be like oh you look hot or whatever and I remember being like hmm that's crossing a line we don't cross. And then we're out one night for my, I think it was my, like, 22nd birthday. And he um, drove me and all my friends, paid for my dinner, which is so sweet, right? Like, so, so, so sweet. Looking back, I'm like, okay, my my real guy friends probably wouldn't do, do that. Maybe they'd pay for my lunch or something, but going through all that work and driving a bunch of girls, they probably, that, that's boyfriend duties, right? And, uh, yeah, that night was weird. He drops me off at home and he has, like, I'm, like, super tired and I remember him leaning over and, like, putting his arm on my chest and just going, like, oh, you're tired, like, okay, go, go inside what? Excuse me. (laughs) I know. I can, like, put myself to bed. Oh, my God. So then I remember calling Julia, my best friend, and I'm like, girl, I think this is getting weird. And she's like, oh, no, we are holding the benefit of the doubt. We had a lot of respect for this guy. So we're holding the benefit of the doubt. We're like, no, he knows. Like, he knows you're healing he was friends with your ex, like, he knows you're in your self-love era, like, it's not going that way, right? Here's the thing, though, we were about to go on a, like, three-night trip for my birthday, staying in the same Airbnb with other friends, obviously, and I'm like, oh, no, I just have a weird feeling about it, right? But we go, we go, (laughs) And, um, I don't feel good. I have a weird feeling in my tummy. You know what I mean? So then one of my best guy friends comes in one night, right? He, like, comes in late, uh, shows late to the situation. Shows up late. Whatever. You get it. And, um, you know, like, you, I feel like him and I were so excited to see each other. We're so close. We're, like, clearly bonded that's a much longer friendship like 10 years did I just get mascara all over my face okay and I think it was causing I think it was inciting jealousy again very weird not very friendship vibes and so this night is really important this is when I was like in my cooking era and all I wanted to do for my birthday was cook my friends like my favorite pasta that I had been perfecting for a while. So. I spend like an hour cooking this pasta to perfection. I'm so excited about it. I'm doing everything. I'm plating it like we're in a Michelin star fucking restaurant. I set it down. I like set it out on the dinner table. Everyone sits down. Obviously, I'm starving. And that whole day, my friend had been playing a joke on this guy where she <laughs> she was, like, hiding puzzle pieces all over the place. And obviously, we were all in on it. And he was thinking that it was haunted because he kept finding the puzzle pieces. 
And so he's losing his mind over it. It was a funny little prank. And she's like, I'm going to tell him at dinner. So I'm like, okay. So she starts doing a toast, you know? And uh, then she, like, looks at him and she goes, oh, by the way, I'm the one who was hiding the puzzle pieces. He goes silent, but the kind of silent anger where you can poke it with a stick. Gives me the heebie-jeebies to this day. And then he shoots her a look, and she's like, oh, wait, are you mad at me? And he's like, don't fucking worry about it. And shoots me a look. And I'm like, wait, are you mad at me? And I think this is like, you know what I mean? I think it's all a joke. So I'm like, are you mad at me? Because I caught the look. And then leans in at a table of all my best friends on my birthday after I just cooked and yells in my face, yeah, I am fucking mad at you. I still think it's a joke because it was so, like, dramatic that I thought it was a joke. So I'm kind of giggling. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, what do you mean? Leans over, gets in my face, points his fucking finger at me. And he's like, don't do that fucking baby talk to me. Like, you talk to an adult. You talk like an adult when you talk to me. And I'm, like, actually perplexed. And starts telling me to shut my fucking mouth, and all this stuff, like, just keeps going. I am perplexed. I go silent, not out of submission, right? I go silent to, like, collect myself and to decide what I'm going to do next because I don't want to, you know, make everyone at the table uncomfortable I want to protect my friends and I also want to like take the right course of action so I'm like going silent to center myself he takes it as submission like he thinks yelling at me like that worked or that I'm okay with being spoken to that way so then he starts trying to like shoot the shit with my other friends at the table and that's when I was like No, you're not going to talk to me like that on my birthday and then be happy, you know, feel like you succeeded and then proceed to chat with all my friends. So I like stand up, push my chair and I haven't even eaten a bite of my pasta and I go, will you come talk to me? So I bring him upstairs and somewhere private, you know, so that we don't bother everyone else. And, um, I just like right away, just go, you know, first and foremost, clearly you're not mad about the puzzle pieces and this is something else, but it doesn't really matter what that is because no matter what, it is never okay to speak to me that way. You crossed such a line, such a boundary, and I don't allow anyone to speak to me that way in my life. Uh, and you definitely don't have the right. Okay kind of, you know, mic drop. (laughs) Anyways, long story short for this part, because this went on for a while, he started crying, basically confessing feelings and all this shit. And I was like so livid and we had to sleep another night. And that one sucked. That one re- that one genuinely felt like a real betrayal cuz I was like have you just been like creating this image in your head, you know, that this is something more than it ever was. And I really felt like it was clear that it was a friendship and I knew I had made that clear, so that was like that was like y- all of your emotional stuff that you put on me without me knowing is not my responsibility. That's not that's your stuff and that has nothing to do with me it's not fair you created something in your head and uh I am not whatever image you created in your head and uh, I cut it off blocked and have not spoken to that person since because I, I wouldn't like that is not something I allow in my reality or in my friendships you know so I think part of like Part of building quality friendships is knowing when to leave one or to end one or when enough is enough. 
some situations call for a deep conversation and some situations call for just an absolute no. Um, but it's important because just like your romantic relationships, you have to know boundaries in friendship too and you have to know your worth and what you'll accept and what you won't accept. So I know that's a crazy, ridiculous story, but it was a big moment because I was newly sober and in another self-love journey and I just, I, I, I like, I saw my power again in that moment, you know, like I remembered, oh wait, like you know what, you know what you deserve and what you don't deserve and it was a good moment. Okay, I'm ready to read your stories. Jeez, sorry it took us a while to get here. Okay, first story. Thank you guys so much for sending these in. I love reading your stories. They just, it makes my day. So we're just going to read a few since this episode is already so long. Uh, but we will have many more confession episodes, don't you worry. Uh, and if you have any ideas of things that you would love to hear stories you want to hear, topics, just let me know. Okay, um, the first one is... My best friend since first grade. She was always sneaky and I would let her sleep over and clothes would go missing over the years, yeah. Eventually I noticed her wearing everything that I was missing and she swore she bought it herself or her mom bought it, but she wouldn't come over anymore and once she stopped... Once she stopped, my clothes stopped going missing. Fast forward to after high school, I found out she slept with my baby daddy a couple weeks after she reached out wanting to reconnect and rekindle our friendship. I never took her up on the offer or went off on her. All I did is pray for her to get her karma. <gasps> wow. You know, I'm glad you trusted yourself and didn't take her up on the offer because what a what a horrible dirty move. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah, that's another this this is like reminiscent of the ex stories. Like how diabolical we've got stealing, lying, and fucking your baby daddy. That's horrible. I always think of, um, there was this really, uh, I, I saw it recently and it was like, I hope you have the day you deserve. And I just love that because karma will do its thing. And I don't need to have a hand in the karma is how I feel. You know what I mean? That's just more energy on my plate. I'm just going to let God, the universe, whatever it is, work it out because it's inevitable. So you just go and you find your peace. Okay. All right, next one. First big friendship breakup happened when a friend secretly got back together with her ex that treated her terribly. Oh, that was a deal breaker for me because no matter how all of our friends feel about him, the fact you lied to my face for over a month about where you were was something I couldn't move past. It was a breach of trust and I felt like I saw her differently after. Mm, that's a deep one. I, I have a lot of feelings about that and I understand. I've been on both sides of the coin, you know. I've been the friend in a toxic, unhealthy relationship and I've been the friend helping the friend who's in a toxic, unhealthy relationship and both roles are so difficult. When you're the friend, you know, especially if you love really hard, it is so painful to see your friend stay in a situation that you know she doesn't deserve and uh you know and you hear about it over and over and you're realizing like it or it feels like your advice is not getting through but that's not the whole truth uh but I do think the second part of the lying you know I understand that's hard right like when when for a month she's not telling you the truth and yeah it is a breach of trust you know if something that's important to you in your friendships is is uh transparency that's absolutely a breach of trust and it's it's hard to sit with that you know so I understand that's a painful thing it's a painful thing to watch and it's also painful to feel like she couldn't trust you um, or she wasn't confiding in you and being honest. You, I get it. 
And the other side of it is really hard, too, because when you're the person in a toxic relationship like that, you are, you're underneath layers of codependency, which is a lot like addiction, right? So, like, what does an addict do when they're addicted to their drug? They'll lie, cheat, and steal to get it in any way they need to, right? And so that person they're with essentially becomes like a drug and becomes a high they're chasing, right? And, you know, serious addicts will ruin friendships, ruin relationships, ruin their lives to get that high. And so there's there's so many things that happens to a person's psyche when they're inside of a cycle in a toxic relationship and it, and, and it will hold you. And so you'll you'll treat the people in your life less than they deserve as well. And it's a hard place to be, you know. I think overall the best thing to do in these situations is you have to make a choice if you if you want to be friends with someone like that. You have to you have to know that their journey is their journey and even though you may know exactly the answer and you probably do. You probably do know the answer. I always say to myself, who am I to decide when someone figures something out? You know, that's, that's their prerogative. That's their journey. And maybe they they need more time to reach that point. So your words do get through, even if they don't hit until later. You know, I had friends who would tell me things when I was in really unhealthy relationships and I have good friends who who they know me and they know that I'm strong-willed and they'd tell me anyways. <laughs> then, you know, when the inevitable happened, I would say you were right, you know, because you remember those things people said and, uh, and, and those friendships mean the world to me because they stuck it out. But when you're that person, there's, there's a responsibility you have to still treat people with, with what they deserve, with kindness and love. And showing up to your friendships regardless of what you're going through. I don't think there's any reason to 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 hurt people no matter what. Hurt people intentionally no matter what the weight of what you're going through is. You can always be kind and find room for kindness. So a layered situation but I understand that's really hard and I hope I hope that she's okay and I hope that you're feeling better after going through something like that because I I know that that's rough okay next one this one happened when this friend was continually continually being so negative and hateful to people we were both friends with yeah no I got to a point where I tried to set boundaries and take a break from our friendship, and she went off the rails and attacked me over text repeatedly. She tried to guilt trip me by saying I made her suicidal. What is with this, man? I held firm on my boundaries and didn't allow her to manipulate me. To this day, she carries ill will towards me, according to mutual friends. I don't ever think of her except to hope she's doing well. I love you. You are a strong individual, and you know your worth, and this is gorgeous all around, all around. I think that, yeah, you set those boundaries, and you're not taking the guilt tripping. But this reminds me of our last episode. It's like, like how selfish are you to put that on someone else? I'm proud of you for not letting her manipulate you and for having the maturity of just wishing her well and going on your way. You did the right thing, in my opinion. Okay, one of my best friends last year had a crush on me, but I was with another girl. She told me if I didn't break up with my girlfriend, she would spread a rumor that I did something to her. I blocked her. She's gone. (laughs) Bye-bye. I love, I blocked her, she's gone, goodbye. Spread a rumor. This must be like middle school or, yeah. My little brother said he wrote one in and I have a feeling that might have been him. Okay. 
first off, just want to say I love the pod. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so at the time, I thought this girl was my best friend's soulmate. But looking back, she was always backstabbing me. I was hopelessly in love with my best guy friend, and she was the only one that knew that, and she always helped me with it. Him and I got in a horrible fight, and I was heartbroken about it. One night, I'm home alone and sad, and out of the blue, she texts me a photo of her in bed with him. <gasps> yup, she took his virginity and fucked my best friend that I was in love with. Our friendship did continue somehow. Oh, no. But we eventually fizzled out later on. That's horrible. That's so mean. That's so mean. You know, like, the intimacy of your best friend being the only one that knows, like, who you have a crush on or who you're in love with. <gasps> like, that's not just a bad friend. That's a horrible... Who does that? Sent you a photo? Oh, my God. That's fucked up. Okay, just a couple more. My longtime best friend and I ended up falling for the same guy. I know, so cliche. I only ever had feelings, but she actually ended up dating him, and we would all hang out, us three. Ugh. I can't describe how horrible it was, lol. But the worst part was that she ended up putting all of her energy into him, and I got cast to the side. We eventually stopped talking for a couple years, but she ended up reaching out to me years later, explaining that they broke up, and she wishes she never stopped putting effort into our friendship. Oh, we actually did get lunch and we healed our friendship and our best friends to this day. So happy ending. Yay, happy ending. That's cute. I like to hear that, you know, you can grow from it, mature, grow up and heal from that. I hope you guys just, I don't know, continue on that. That's really special. Cute. How cute. Okay. Last one we're going to read today. Hi, first I want to say I love this pod. It feels like such a safe space. My heart, that's all I want. I just want it to feel like a safe space. That's cute. Thank you. So I recently ended my friendship with my best friend after a lot of work and therapy. Got it. I realized a lot. I was always ride or die and I thought she was too. But I think that's just what I wanted to believe. Mm. Looking back, she would always do subtle things to put me down. If I started hanging out with other friends, she would tell me horrible things they said about me behind my back. If that was even true. Probably not true. And always told me she's the only one who really has my back. If we were getting ready for something and I had on an outfit I, would, I loved, she always... I, if I had on an outfit that I loved, she would always convince me to change... If we were around guys, she would change her whole personality and put me down in little ways. Honestly, though, I had no backbone, and it took a long time to realize that. It's a heart, it's a heartbreak, but I'm so much better off now. Wow. Yeah, that um, other people that you started to hang out with saying horrible things behind your back, probably not true. I'm going to put money on not true, and also always telling you that she's the only one who really has my back that is quite possessive quite possessive I think that you dodged a bullet you protected yourself and you're gonna learn so much from this and you're gonna learn how to pick the right friends and this is gonna go into all the types of relationships you have in your life and I'm really really sorry that you went through that though it's so hard when you kind of have rose-colored glasses on and then you look back on something and realize how many red flags there were or or subtle ways of of behavior that was hurtful it's a lot but now that you're looking back and you're going over it you're always going to have that knowledge in you and you're going to know what to do the next time so I'm I'm proud of you Oh, you guys are so cute. I love you so much. Wow. Thank you for sending in your stories. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'm really glad we got to talk a little bit about, about friendship. And friend breakups are so hard. They really, really are. But just like everything else, you end up learning so much. And you're just fine-tuning, you know, the relationships 
in your life and especially the one you have with yourself. Uh, I didn't talk about it much, but just a quick little bit. Look into a little bit about Venus being retrograde because I chose this episode for a couple of reasons. Venus deals with love, beauty, uh, you know, the things you love materially, but also aesthetics and your body. And so there's a lot of themes when, when we're having a retrograde. And uh, when we're retrograde, we're really looking back, we're reviewing, and so we're going over something. And so I think that might be why all my friends are on like a wellness kick and also why it's such a good time to look at the quality of love in your life, especially, you know, starting with the relationship you have with yourself. And yeah, that's really all. I love you guys so much. I'll see you next week. I'm so excited. I'm going to miss you. And thanks for being here and thanks for hanging out. Okay, talk to you guys soon and have a beautiful day. Bye.